welcome to the Borneo Talk Show. I'm Ashley Pan, your host. Today's guest is a huge advocate of anti-litter movement, the backbone behind the efforts to beautify Bintulu and making it a clean town. She's none other than Dato Rosia Moshide. Hi, Dato. Hi. <laughs> Firstly, congratulations on your Dato ship. You've gone an incredible journey, so you really deserve it. Thank you very much, Ashley. <laughs> that, that comment of yours, I leave out my morning. <laughs> I've always, you know, I'm very thankful that you've always been very supportive towards homegrown brands. Mm -hmm. You know, in Sarawak, especially, you're always so proud of any Sarawakian out there. And, and like how you have shown with Borneo Talks. So it's really great to see that. Oh, I, I watch how uh, Borneo Talk uh, expanded or have grown this year, right when it was a Kuching Talk. And um, I'm very, very happy with how you guys have tried to diversify mm. on the product of Borneo Talk now. You, mm. you, you, I see the handicraft downstairs and the single mothers which are involved with your uh, project. So mm -hmm. I, I believe um, uh, Bono Talk is moving in the right direction. Thank you so much. Such kind words. <laughs> that <laughs> lift up my morning too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I guess, I guess we always believe that in everything we do, we must always, you know, persevere. I think it's been so long. <laughs> persevere and evolve to be better. Yeah. So it really means so much coming from you. After five years in BDA, how's retirement so far? <laughs> I thought I can never retire. Like a friend said, they can they can't even imagine myself retiring. I can't imagine. <laughs> But I think um, I took a month off okay. before, uh, after I retired to think whether I should take on a new assignment or not. Mm. And I think I love being retired. Really? I woke up in the morning, see my grandson Aww. with all the toys around him mm. in front of the TV and I sit there sipping my coffee with my, with my daughter saying that, Oh, mommy, it's so good to see you not rushing for any oh, appointment, yeah. not rushing for any meeting, mm -hmm. you know. Then that struck me. I think I miss all the years of my uh, grandchildren growing up. Mm. Ever since you led Bintulu Development Authority, BDA, you've always put anti-litter and recycling as your agenda. What inspired you to you know, come up with and start these campaigns? Well, I, when, when I go to places, mm. I like to see clean city, beautiful city, beautifully landscape, orderliness and all that. So when I was put to be in charge of Pintulu Development Authority, I believe that we can make changes. Yeah. We can I agree. make changes and leave uh, it as a legacy when you leave the job. So I've been to Pintulu's event, sure. the Borneo International Kite Festival, Festival. organized mm -hmm. by BDA, right? And honestly, I love that event. I feel that is one of the best tourism events in Sarawak. And I was really impressed with the community there. I, in a festival, I always see rubbish all lying on the mm -hmm. floor. But that event, I actually see people obediently would walk to the end to look for a rubbish bin to throw their rubbish. So it's actually the mindset that, that you guys have placed upon them, the civic virtue of it. Mm. Mm. BIKF, call it, um, is the premier event for Bintulu. Um, missing that is a lot mm. for, the, for the people in Bintulu. Um, that is one event that is happening from 9 in the morning to 11 at night. Four, five to seven days, non-stop. And you don't see rubbish. You don't see rubbish. In other events, which is common that you see, two or three hours after opening ceremony, uh, you, I get so <laughs> sick to my stomach seeing this rubbish. But 
BIKF, we want it to be an exemplary event mm. where the long nights, the long days, we do not see rubbish. And of course, they know my enforcement staff are mingling with the crowd. Okay? Mingling with the crowd in the plain clothes. One single rubbish to throw, they can be napped at. So that, that's very important. One of the things that I was very inspired by her was your ability to, you know, when you mentioned about your Facebook, your social platform, the minute oh. you put it up there, the details, people will come and yeah. go, you know. I've seen it happen when you post up to ask people to go and event with you. And people would just come and pick up rubbish with you, mm. pick up all the trash around Bintulu. And wow, so that is something I feel that we can emulate. Yeah, Doctor? I, I believe social media is the way forward. Mm. For any of us who, who are working in a local authority, because the very essence of a local authority is to serve members of the public. Mm. And you can't cover every nook, some corner of a town or a city. You need information, you mm. need feedback from mm. the public. So that's where social media is. And also to the staff, when they know that the boss is monitoring them, <laughs> their services and public complaints through, pub, through social media, through Facebook, they are more vigilant. Mm, they are yes. more vigilant. And many a times, I receive the information way ahead of them. So that makes them wanting to do their job. Mm, and push even harder. Like, push I want harder. to be the first before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I, I, I believe in a local authority, the way forward is through social media. You know, there's one thing that I was really impressed that you have done is you actually did some plogging. I yeah. think maybe our viewers don't know what plogging is. Maybe you can tell them a bit about it. Plogging is an activity whereby the hiking or the jogging enthusiasts in their uh, jogging and hiking activity along the track, along the way, they see rubbish, they pick it up. Mm. This, this is what plogging is. Speaking of that, let's see how we do plogging. <laughs> okay. wants to see a clean city, a clean town, a clean state, a clean country. You know, is there anyone that actually came up to you to share their views on that? The five years that we are pushing for it, mm. a few individuals become very obvious to me, advocating it together with us, wanting to see a clean and orderly town. If I can mention here, People like Jiki John, who is doing it together with Trash Heroes. They, 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 in all the activities, they have rubbish collection. And people like Ling Leong Ming, a gentleman, a retiree, who spend a lot of his time jogging uh, every morning uh, with his friend in Tanjong Batu with Wong Tech. The two of them will collect rubbish every morning. They started as early as 5.40 before six, and by the time eight, I see a clean <laughs> beach. And then, um, and then of course, like I said, the Petty Traders Association, the schools, UPM children, they always have uh, activities that join up with BDA in our beach cleaning. And I can tell you, 
our Tanjung Batu is now the most visited spot mm. for visitors to Bintulu. Even uh, uh, developers association like Shida, whenever we I, I blast something on Facebook on on um, cleaning campaign, you can be assured they will turn up yep. in, in in big groups mm. because. A clean town means a good business. Mm. <laughs> yes, I agree. I like yeah. that. Actually. A good clean business. town will bring visitors. Mm. It means business. More investment. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I don't understand why this is not advocating mm. vigorously, religiously, mm. passionately by all local councils. Mm. That should be the main agenda. Mm. Forget about having mega projects if we can keep a town clean. And picking up rubbish on the street should be a pride for us all. People might see before mm. they, they, they relate rubbish with something not, I mean, dirty. Mm. But we should be able to turn our mindset to accept that people who care, people who love the city, people who want to see the city thriving must also pick up rubbish. Something quite honorable to do. Yeah. You know, nowadays, we can actually use our old plastic bags and repurpose it into a new recycled bag. I was thinking we can try and do a bit of crocheting today. So first, we're supposed to find any plastic bag that you don't want to use anymore. You have to cut off the handles and cut this bit of tail off, the seal. Once you've done that, you have to cut it into strips like this. So I've actually pre-cut everything so you can have a look at this. We'll take two strips together, put one into the other loop or the other string. So look at this, yeah. And we're trying to tie a knot and hold this up and slowly pull it and always pull it closer and closer. You need to make sure this whole thing is straight. Only then you start tightening it. So first we need to do a loop. So this is like your string, right? Mm. So we make it a hold, hold it with this index finger. Hold it like a loop like that. So once we've done that, we're going to twist your finger to make it into... Yes, correct, yeah. Okay, and then open this. Yeah, take the tail. Where's which one's the tail? Okay, nice. We both done it. Look at this. Now, put your crochet hook into the hole that you've done here. So, we're gonna loop it over and pull it. Ta da! We did our first crochet. Okay, we did. So we're going to just keep continue that step to make a long strip. But what we've done is I've actually done a sample for you so that you have to keep crocheting until you get a proper base or if you want then you can make the base of the bag. You know, so it's something interesting that we are learning. Yeah. And so for the rest of our viewers, if you want to try it and if you've done it, take a photo, tag us at Borneo Talk and we love to see more of it. That's why I have a surprise for you. Hi. <laughs> Lester, can you bring in the surprise? Ta-da! Wow. So, this is a crochet bag. The whole thing is the from that plastic? The whole thing is from plastic, that's what we learned before. And it's crocheted and actually it's handmade by Ivy. All oh. this is made by Ivy for you. And it's interesting how, you know, something like that. Then you can use it for grocery shopping. Yeah, yeah now you repurpose. This is nice. <laughs> she likes it. Yay! <laughs> yeah, so we have also put it under our brand, SUB, Stirring Up Borneo. Thank you, Data, for your time today. Thank you. Thank you for this. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> Let's be part of the solution, not pollution. And let's make it a habit to pick it and bin it. Thank you for watching the Borneo Talk Show. I'll see you next time. Yeah.